and we start with Amon Shumpert and his bathroom. Amon Shumpert, NBA player. Oh my God, he's married to a beautiful singer. Her name is Tayana Taylor. And what's happening? They cannot stop having babies in bathrooms. The first one came as a surprise in 2015 when Amon Shumpert and Tayana Taylor found themselves in the bathroom of their home on the phone with 911 saying, hey, my girl's having a baby right now. You gotta walk me through this. And he did. He delivered it himself alone. Well, I mean, obviously she was there and she did a lot of the work, but he did it. Then it gets even crazier because just now he delivers a second child in their home. He does it himself. Oh my God, a seasoned veteran. You gotta earn a lot of respect for a man who can deliver his own child. Could you do it? I couldn't. I know for a fact, I know what would happen. I'd pass out. Not a problem for Amon. He's not known for passing. The bathroom, I would think, is one of the worst places to give birth. I mean, can you imagine the child's first images of this planet? Your father's half-empty bottle of Rogaine, a pube over there on the toilet, four-year-old bag of Epsom salt staring you in the face. That sounds like what MacGyver would need in order to deliver a baby. And look, delivering at home sounds like an awful place to give birth. For hundreds of thousands of years, humans have been giving birth at home. And every single second during that entire time, they were all thinking the same thing. Ah, maybe we should have been a hospital or something. People are super particular about their homes too. I was at a house party of a friend and I accidentally spilled a drink on a blanket and she got super pissed off at me. Only to later find out that she gave birth at home. Which I thought was pretty hypocritical because it's like, oh, so it's a miracle when you spill fluids all over your house, but not when I do it. Then you have water births at home too, which is always blowing my mind. It's very strange. I, I haven't done any research because it terrifies me. I just imagine it like, uh, like when you release a dolphin back into the wild. And then you have some people that look like they were water birth and then never came up for air. Jack Ma, CEO, founder of Alibaba. What, what happened? I hate to say it as well, Steve Buscemi. Looks like he just surfaces and then comes back down. And then you got Michael Phelps. Jesus Christ, look at that guy. He's not even a good swimmer. He's just trying to get home. Story number two, NASA juice. We're gonna put our science hat on real quick. When astronauts are out in space, they lose a lot of muscle mass. There's no gravity. They don't need all their muscles, so their body starts shedding it, which NASA sees as a problem for distant space travel. So, what's the solution? Steroids! They're calling these mice that they've injected with steroids, they're calling them mighty mice. Why? Because NASA has found a way to block two proteins that say to the body, hey, stop putting on muscle mass. When they brought back these mice from space, they were just yoked out. They didn't lose any muscle mass whatsoever. The idea of mutant bodybuilding mice from space is terrifying. Wow, look at them. They're doing shoulder shrugs. They're using a mouse trap to work on their mouse trap. Can't put them through a maze anymore. They just break right through the walls like a mini Kool-Aid man. NASA's only tested this on mice so far, but guarantee pro athletes, bodybuilders, DJ Qualls, highly interested nasa at this point just start your own space roid olympics that would be amazing i would absolutely watch that you just get all the famous athletes that have been caught using steroids put them in space let them compete roger clements okay how many miles can he throw a fastball jose canseco try to get him to hit a pitch at sixteen thousand miles an hour lance armstrong how many light years can you keep denying you ever used any my friend once told me dude I wish they had steroids, but like not for your muscles, for like your brain. Yeah, Dave, they're called books. You read them and you get smarter. It's only a matter of time until we start seeing people using this stuff on the street. It's gonna be pretty easy to tell when that happens too, because the guy bagging your groceries is gonna look like Bane. When I was reading this story, I was like, oh man, you know how cool it would be if I took some steroids, just built some insane muscle mass. And then I thought, ah, oh, dude, you know, if I did take some, it would just go to a stupid play you know it'd be like my eyebrows would get ripped i'd have these tiny feminine wrists but my my eyebrows would look like the outside of batman's mask why did he have eyebrow muscles on his mask by the way what was that all about he could have just had like a blank helmet instead he's like he was always looking like he just heard a noise downstairs and he's home alone what was that hello 
Someone there. Story number three, Facebook wants to pay you not to use Facebook. What they're doing is they're conducting a study on how much social media has an impact on elections. They're willing to pay you $120 to deactivate your Facebook page from the end of September till after the election. Look, I just want to hear on the record that social media does not play an influence on our elections. I'll tell you who does are doctors. And I know that because I was uh, I was in my I Love Corgi's Facebook group and uh, I was reading a meme and it totally summed it up. I'm going to read it to you right here. Doctors are actually giving our medical history to our state representatives and they're using it to gauge who is more easily influenced psychologically. And then the government uses that information to find out who's going to get microchip vaccine first so they can profit off the fear of made up virus so they can win an election on the back of dead Americans who actually didn't die. Because like I said, you can't die from a fake virus. There's two types of people on social media, the people that want something and the people that don't. The people that don't, they're like your friends. They're like Charles or Gabriella or, you know, these people who are like, hey, guys. Do you think donuts are a dessert or a breakfast food? The people that do want something from you, they range from stupid to dubious. Personally, I'm on the stupid side of the scale because what I do is meaningless. I just want attention for this daily nonsense I call a show. Follow me at Sparks Radio. Next up, you have people selling you shit that you don't need. You ever want to have a picnic on a lake? Then it goes trolls, hackers, your very confused aunt that uses Facebook like a search engine. How do you make sourdough banana bread and post? Then at the top, you have the people that want to poison your mind with propaganda to fit their agenda. These people are known as Russians. Facebook, you shouldn't pay us $120 to stop using it. You should pay them $120 to stop putting out their bullshit. You gotta create some competition, man. Putin, let's say, pays them $100 a day to do it. Facebook, you pay them $120. Putin ups the ante. He's like, hey, I'm gonna kill your family. Okay, well, that's, that's a hell of an up, okay? What if you did this? What if you tell them that you'll get their ants to stop using Facebook as a search engine. It's not Google, Teresa. Give them a little taste of capitalism. And then you turn it all around. They're getting a taste of our propaganda. Hey, that's it for the show, but I really want to know, what do you think? Would you quit Facebook for $120? I'm curious. I really want to do it. I, I think that would be like, oh man, it'd be great just to get that out of your life. What do you think? Would you be able to do it from no end of September to November? Quit Facebook. Let me know. Drop a Drop a comment, okay? If you want something awesome, I said I was on the scale. If you want a free Sparks Radio sticker, at Sparks Radio, hit me up. You got to follow and then DM me your address and I'll drop one in the mail for you. Okay, I'll mail it to whatever address you DM me. Subscribe and then, of course, tell a friend. Like I said, that, that'd make it like the, the coolest top tier of a human being. So do that. Tell a friend, subscribe, and drop a comment. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.